Welcome to the very first episode of Supergirl Theories and Conspiracies. I'm Brian from Good Nerd Bad Nerd. If you've never seen one of my videos before, basically what I do is after watching the episode each week, I break down who we met, what happened, what we saw, and what it all means and where it's going. So to get things started, first episode of Supergirl, we had a lot of characters and we found out a lot of who they are and why they're in the show. But on top of that, we also had our villain of the week. So we'll start there. Vartox. Vartox is a character who's been in DC's universe for a really long time, uh, and he's kind of insane. Um, the character we saw in the show is nothing like the character in the comics, except for the fact that he is strong, and the character in the comic basically has all of Superman's powers, but just not, not quite as powerful. Um, he comes from the planet Valoron, and again, he's not really a villain initially. He's just trying to kind of seek revenge or justice for the death of his wife. And it gets a little complicated at times. But most recently, he essentially was looking to get Power Girl to help him impregnate his entire planet through use of some sort of impregnant, I don't know, some weird pregnancy laser ray where he impregnated uh, the women and the men. So he's a really bizarre character and his comic actually if you're familiar with Zardoz the uh, Sean Connery film it, it, he looks a bit like that so he was our one-off character of the week he's the villain of the week we won't be seeing him again um, but he's an interesting character from the comics and it's interesting to see what they started with and what they ended up with in the show next uh, Supergirl's mom and her sister her mom Allura Zorel, and then her sister Astra Allura was a big player in the uh, Kryptonian civilization. Um, she was on the ruling council of New Krypton. She survived uh, the destruction of the planet, which is important to note because we don't see what happens to her. We assume she dies in the planet, but she actually does survive using some of Brainiac's old technology. And then that's when Brainiac comes back to the planet and uh, traps New Kandor and all of these uh, survivors and Allura is one of them. Now, she is on the New Kryptonian councils. Um, she has a strong belief in uh, Kryptonian justice and society, almost to a fault at one point where when New Krypton is set up, she uh, doesn't allow anyone from Earth, including Superman, to set foot on the planet. Now, her sister actually isn't in the comic. She was a character that was created specifically for the show, and. So we don't know much about her. We don't know if she's a twin. We don't know if she's a clone. But you can bet that the fact that they are identical looking is, is going to come into play and most likely be used to mess with uh, Kara's head. Whether she knows her aunt exists or not is um, something that will definitely be revealed later on. So that's, uh, that's just the little bit we get for um, Kara's, Kara's family. Um, Next, the Space Jail. This is uh, Fort Raz. This actually was a prison um, in the comics. Initially, it was a military outpost, but then in the New 52, it became um, a temporary prison that was put into uh, the Phantom Zone. Now, an interesting thing about it is in the comics, the prison doesn't feel the same effects that normal people in the Phantom Zone would feel. Um, like was said in the intro, Kara didn't experience any passing of time that's not true for people in the prison in the comics so we'll have to see if the people in the prison actually did feel that uh, passing of time or if they were in stasis um, they didn't really give us much just that they were in there and kind of fell out of the phantom zone so that's kind of all we we get about the jail I don't think we're, we're really gonna need to know any more about that but there's just the background on Fort Raz now the big thing this week um, Kara's buddy at work, uh, Win Scott or Shot, however you, they pronounced it. Um, he in the comics eventually becomes the villain known as Toy Man, and he has a really complicated uh, history with everyone around him, specifically with his boss, uh, Cat Grant, who's played by Callista Flockhart. 
Now, at one time, um, he basically, you know, he's making all these toys. He gets really upset, and he kidnaps a bunch of kids and then murders them all, including Cat Grant's son. And the reason he did this is because when he was in jail for other stuff, a toy company came and licensed his, uh, his, his appearance. And none of those toys sold because the kids thought he looked too much like a little clown. It wasn't scary enough, wasn't evil looking enough. He didn't look like a bad guy. So kids never bought him. So he resented the kids and basically he, he claimed that the, their, the kids' rejection of him drove him to do that. Later on, he would claim that it was one of the robots he often makes to replace people, that it was one of those robots that was acting as him that killed the kids. But I, I don't know if we'll actually get into that. Um, another thing that's important to note, though, is later on he became a part of this group called the Superman Revenge Squad, and he was on that team with a guy who uh, was known as Cyborg Superman. And that takes us into our next character from this week, Hank Henshaw. Hank Henshaw goes on to become Cyborg Superman. Hank Henshaw was the, the leader of that uh, the Department of Extra Normal Operations. This is the group that seemed way too in the know and way too on top of it and you know took Kara out in the first two minutes she's out flying around in her costume um this group it's kind of gonna be her team you know it's gonna be kind of a, an antagonistic relationship but with him with hank expect that something bad's gonna happen and they i think they are really gonna try and push him towards that cyborg superman kind of uh vibe it's too he's too uh significant of a villain in the comics to not for them not to want to do something with that interesting enough the original character hank henshaw who becomes cyborg superman was was actually him and his family were kind of a, a spoof on the fantastic four dc did something like that they were astronauts went into space and after the accident essentially the entire family dies uh it's a really tragic story and involves a lot of them committing suicide but so that's so he he gets really kind of psychologically damaged in that and so we will see what uh what they eventually end up doing with hank if they're going to tie into that part of it at all so the last thing from this episode though it was just a really quick moment and if you caught it then you were probably a fan of the adventures of lois and clark uh when Kara is brought to the, her new family by Superman, the parents, her new parents, are actually Dean Cain and Helen Slater. Dean Cain played Clark Kent, Superman, on the Lois and Clark. And Helen Slater was Supergirl in the movies. So this is, uh, DC likes doing this in their, in their shows where they do these shout outs to the original people who kind of portrayed this. In Flash, you had uh, Barry's dad was Flash on the original show. You had Mark Hamill reprising his role as the trickster. They love doing this kind of thing. So it, it was a nice shout out to those uh, previous previous actors and their roles. Um, I doubt we'll see them again, but nice that it was there. So what did you guys think of the premiere? That's all. That, that, there was a lot of stuff going on. And again, it was just a lot of character introduction. I like that she's calling herself Supergirl right away. We don't have to wait four seasons arrow until you get to call yourself your actual name. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, got some, it's gotten the uh, gratuitous plot exposition out of the way. So hopefully this next episode is really going to jump into the mythology. So tell me what you guys thought of the premiere. Tell me what you guys think of these characters that are being introduced. And until next week, this has been Supergirl Theories and Conspiracies. And I'm Brian from Good Nerd Bad Nerd.